Welcome to Park Place Lanes in Wyndham, New Hampshire, where the team of KOD, led by Craig Holbrook, is facing off against Spare Tires, captained by Ben Bestel. This is from the Mixed Team Tournament, and we are underway with Joanne Rosano bowling for Craig Holbrook's team. She uh, starts with a nine box, and Celeste Buckmore starting for Ben Bestel's team, also with a nine. Joanne drops nine on first ball in the second box, leaving a 10 pin with a bunch of wood in front of it, a couple of planks. And meanwhile, Celeste with a six drop, good hit on the head pin, but she's got a difficult split triangle in the left corner plus the 10 pin with a piece of wood over by the 10 that might be of some use. And there's a spare by Joanne. Celeste is just going to play the triangle, and she got the 8 pin. So she will be open in the second box. And Celeste makes a 9 for 18 after 2. That brings up Lynn Thompson and Sarah Vestal. Lynn for Craig Holbrook's team and Sarah Vestal for Ben Vestal's team. Lynn with a six drop, leaving a tricky four, five, seven, eight, and Sarah just catches the head pin and leaves a two, four, six, seven, nine, ten, but with a piece of wood that might help her. Let's see what she can do with this if she hits it somewhere around the red line or a little bit north of there, and wow, that's exactly what she did. Great shot by Sarah Vesper. And as Lynn Thompson starts with a nine, let's uh, take a look at the replay on this spare by Sarah Vestal. Terrific shot right there. The, the, the wood directs the ball over to the right side and it takes out that whole triangle on the right. Great shot. Thompson with a six drop, and wow, Sarah just punches out one pin, just punches out that three pin. That's a really tough break there. Just missed the head pin by about an inch or so, an inch or two, and uh, just gets one. And she goes through the... right in the same place for two. So Lynn will have an eight box, and Sarah needs an out here. Needs a good ball to, to fill out the green. And again, she goes in the same place, so that's going to give Sarah 13 after 2 and Lynn Thompson 17 after 2. That brings up Hawk Hallis and Mike Walker. And Hawk punches out a half Worcester on the left side. Mike Walker goes to the right and takes out, it looks like a four drop. It's a little bit of a slow start for both guys. Rich Hawk Hallis will take a seven box to begin. And let's see what Mike Walker can do with this last ball. Mike will take an 8. In the second box, Hawk Hallis misses the head pin but gets a nice break and he's got, ends up getting everything but the head pin. So he'll have a, a good spare opportunity there. And he is all over that spare, all over the head pin for a spare. Mike Walker with the 457 and a piece of wood that from here it's a little tough to tell what he can do with it. And as it turns out, he went by it and just took out the 4-7. So he will most likely have a 10 box. And that's what he's got. Next up, Dave Dupuy from for uh, uh, Craig Holbrook's team and Chris Winniars for Ben Vestal's team.
Dave, as I mentioned in an earlier match, is from Leicester. I think it's Leicester. Out by Worcester, anyway. And he bowls out of Colonial in Worcester, and also uh, Mohegan Bowl in Webster. Chris Winniars bowls out of Park Place Lanes right here, so this is a, sort of a home game for him. Dave Dupuy with a 6-9-10 triangle, and he hits the object pin, but a little bit too light, so he doesn't get the 9. And Chris with a good bid on that 1-7 split, but uh, doesn't quite get the 7 pin. Dave Dupuy starts with a 9, and Chris will be trying to Clean up that 7 pin for a 10 box. This, uh, this is the second day of this 5th annual mixed team tournament here at Park Place. And right now the Craig Holbrook's team, KOD, I'm not sure what that stands for, but they have had the lead uh, pretty much the entire tournament. It's, a, it's an 18 team round robin tournament and each team, so each team bowls a one-string match against every other team. And Holbrook's team jumped out to an early lead yesterday. They were undefeated through several matches, and they have never uh, relinquished the lead, as far as I know. Well, they are definitely the team to beat, and with, uh, you know, it's not hard to understand why, with, led by Craig Holbrook, who was the Pro Series Bowler of the Year. And uh, Lynn Thompson on the women's side has, has uh, won most of the uh, events that she's competed in, including the Massachusetts and New Hampshire Open All Events State Tournaments. So uh, when you take those two and add veterans like Hawk Hallis, Dave Dupuy, Joanne Rosano, and on the bench they have Gary Santora. It's not really a big surprise to see that team leading the tournament. Craig Holbrook starts out with a 6 drop, leading 3, 6, 7, 10, and is that going to go? Not quite. John Starner, bowling for Ben Vestal's team, spare tires is also going to be open in the first box. Craig Holbrook starts with a 9, and John also with a 9. And Craig Holbrook with a very similar hit to the one that uh, Hawk Hallis had in his second box. Missed the head pin, but uh, ended up with a 9 drop leaving just the head pin. Meanwhile, John Starner with a five drop, leaving a, and uh, Craig's got the spare. John Starner has the one, two, four, six, ten. And there is a great shot by John Starner for the spare. So after two boxes, Craig Holbrook's team leads by two, and they have got three spares to fill versus one for uh, Ben Vestal's team as the uh, team switch lanes. Celeste Buckmore comes up on lane 18 and Joanne Rosano on lane 17. Joanne is filling the spare that she had in her second frame. And Joanne will fill it with seven, leaving a four, seven, ten with some wood that's uh, probably worth trying. Uh, one that's just, just pretty much parallel to the lane. And I have a feeling she might try and catch one side of the cap and try and get the ball to take one side and the wood itself to take the other. But let's see what she does. Yeah, that's kind of what she tried to do. And it almost worked. Uh, she got the wood to take to go over in the direction of the 4-7, and the ball took out the 10, but the 7-pin did not go. So while Celeste Buckmore has a 10, um, Joanne Rosano also with a 10. 
SLS firing in the fourth box. And nice head pin hit, but it's a little bit full. And she's got 2, 4, 7, 10. Joanne Rosano. Very deliberate, as usual. Never wastes the ball. Joanne, as I think I mentioned in an earlier match, was Bowler of the Year numerous times on the uh, WCBC Pro Tour. I'm not sure how many times, but she won a vast number of tournaments on that tour. And she's also had a great deal of success in team competition. She's also in the Sunday Pro League right here at Park Place. And Celeste makes a nice bid on that split, but doesn't quite take out the 10. Joanne looking for this uh, 136 spare, and it doesn't quite go. She had a, a good hit, but I think that piece of wood might have been frozen on the head pin. So the ball was deflected a little bit more than normal. So she didn't get the six pin. Celeste Buckmore with a 9 for 37 after 4, and Joanne also with a 9. She's got 45 through 4. <clears throat> so that'll bring up Lynn Thompson and Sarah Vestal once again. Sarah with a 7 drop, and Lynn also with a 7. Actually, I think that was a 6 drop for Sarah. She left the 3, 7, 9, 10. And Lynn with a spare on that 5-8-9 triangle. Meanwhile, well, Sarah Vestal with a 7 box. As we move into the 4th frame. Sarah with a 7 drop, leaving a 2-4-7. Pretty good spare leave. And Lynn Thompson with a strike. Really uh, solid shot right there. Sarah going by the 247. She'll try and convert it for a 10 box here. A little bit distracted by the runner on the next lane, possibly. So she'll take a minute. And it's a nine box. So now we've got Mike Walker on lane 18 and Rich Hawk Callis on lane 17. Mike again goes by the head pin but gets uh, kind of a nice break there, leaving one three, five, seven, and some wood. Hawk, with seven on the spare. Six, seven, ten, with some wood. And Mike Walker makes that spare in the third frame. And let's see what Hawk Hallis can do with this. Wow, and that's a great shot by Hawk Hallis. He played the wood perfectly. Let's uh, take a look at the replay on this, as you can see. He uses that wood perfectly to uh, slide it over and take the 6-10 while the ball takes out the 7-pin. That's a terrific shot there. So both bowlers with spares in the third. And Mike Walker with a strike on the spare. Kind of a full hit, but he got a nice splash and got 10 pins out of there in a hurry. Hawk Hallis with an 8-drop. And similar split to the one he just had. This is the 410. And there is a piece of wood in front of the 10, but it doesn't really look very promising. So he actually doesn't try to use the wood. He just goes uh, goes at the 4-pin, takes that one. Now he'll try and clean up the 10-pin. And you see that wood was just not really uh, very useful at all. So it's a 9-box. Here's another look at the strike by Mike Walker. You can see a very full hit splash 
with the two and three pins going to the sidewalls and wiping out the uh, wiping out each side. So that's that's a nice spare fill. Chris Winniars with a nine drop, leaving a five pin. And Dave Dupuy with eight, leaving the four seven. Okay, Chris has got the spare. And Dave also with a spare on the third. Seems like the uh, neither team can get much of an advantage because every time one team throws a mark, the other throws it right back at them. Just a three fill by Chris on the spare. While Dave Dupuy puts nine on that spare, leaving a ten pin with a couple of pieces of wood out front. And they're actually kind of pretty far out away from the 10 pin. So it's not entirely a sure thing that he'll make this bear. They might not cover, and you can see what happened there. Uh, he got a little bit out too far toward the end of that first wood and just kicked it off the sidewall and wasn't able to get the other piece of wood working for him either. So it'll be a 10 box and uh, Chris Winniars with an 8 box. So he, Chris has 41 and Dave with 47. That brings up John Starner to fill the spare. And Craig Holbrook is also working on a spare. John with a 6 drop. And Craig. Hard to see what he got there, but I have it on good authority that that's a 7 drop. And 367 split, but with a pretty good piece of wood that he might be able to use to. Uh, yes, he's got it. Nice spare by Craig. And John Starner takes a 10. So we move on to the fourth frame. And John Starner with a strike. Right on time. Craig Holbrook with an eight fill, leaving, he's got the six and the eight, and a piece of wood that, it's kind of hard to see how he's going to be able to get both of these. If he goes toward the right end, he might be able to do it. Get the, the ball to take the six and the wood to go through and get the eight, but it, it's gonna be tough to get them both. Yeah, as you can see, uh, he got the eight, but he wasn't able to get the ball to cover the six. Sort of, there were ways he could get either one of those, but getting them both is uh, a problem. So Craig will be open against that strike by John Starner. So again, keeping it a close match. And through four boxes, as you can see, Craig Holbrook's team has 243 with one mark to fill, and Ben Vestal's team of spare tires has 200 with two marks to fill. So, still anybody's game at this point, and that's what we've got through four frames. We'll be back with another segment from this match shortly. <laughs> 